All right, guys, I'm on Moon Moon Cosme, and I'll be fighting for the UFL 3 and the Bantamweight Grand Prix Tournament. Welcome to the Moon Show. <laughs> Perfect, mate. Perfect. There we go. Listen, the Moon Show was in full effect, UFL 1. Seriously, I don't know what, what because you promised Rampage you'd do some ninja shit, and you delivered. So uh, how excited are you to get back in there, and, and what, what promises are you going to make us this time for, for the oh, semifinals? Oh, man, like... I'm, I'm not a promise maker. I'm not like, oh man, I want to. I just promised I was gonna do some ninja shit. I'm like, hey, it's the first show. I gotta, I gotta show out. But uh, ultimately, I can promise that I'll be disciplined. That's the most important thing because, like, as a fighter, sometimes I get excited to fight and I'll like engage in the fight and then my coaches be like pull back you missed your knockout shot by this much you missed your rear naked choke by this much you missed your this like i have six fights as a pro uh and i have 10 like eight or nine or 10 as an amateur and as a pro i got so excited to like get the finish that i just like missed some details so i had three pro fights that uh two of them went the distance and then one that i took an l but that one got finished and i'm like the ones that went the distance, I had so many opportunities to finish, but I got suckered into the fight because, like, that's just kind of like a part of me. Like, I just like, oh, man, here's the fight. Like, they're making it ugly. And I'm like, I can make it ugly, too. So I can promise that I will be disciplined, but you still might see some ninja shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, the great thing as well with uh, the, the Grand Prix tournament format is uh, on UFL 1, you got to figure out who your next opponent will be. Oh, so yeah. that, that's very cool. And also a very cool opponent. You're going up against Va uh, Valodia. Um, yes. So what, is your, what are your thoughts on that fight? What excites you about it? And uh, yeah, what, what was it like to know that's the guy you got next? I love that. Like, I just got to give a shout out to the UFL. Uh, I got I got friends and family members, not just like on the healthcare part, but also on other fighters. I've been in the fight scene since 2016 is when I took my first fight all the way until now, like from amateur career till now. And I have teammates who are on big shows. I'm talking about UFC, Bellator, uh, Contender Series. Like, they don't know when their next fight is. And as a fighter, that's kind of like nerve wracking to say, okay, I got to fight. Maybe I take damage. I didn't take no damage or you didn't take no damage in the fight and you're ready to go, but you don't know when the next fight is. You have to now then again, market yourself to all these different promotions. Like, Hey, who wants me versus like, Hey, I know I'm fighting three times this year. I know the dates when I'm fighting. So it takes this massive burden off me as a fighter to know that, hey, I'm fighting three times. I've literally had people say, hey, man, you know, like, just let me know when your next fight is. I'm like, oh, it's this, this and this. And they're like, oh, you already know? I'm like, yeah, because for the last four years, especially after after COVID, no one was getting multi-fight contracts. So I just appreciate that the UFL is like, supporting and boosting the fighters as much as the fighters are going out there and sacrificing and it's like man i really feel like i feel like this is a relationship like it's not like i just work for you guys i'm like oh man this is a relationship so that's uh, that part how i feel about my opponent i am super excited like i love when i get to fight people from foreign countries because every every country has a different style of fighting like kickboxing isn't kickboxing in america isn't kickboxing in netherlands isn't kickboxing in russia isn't kickboxing so you have to expose yourself to as many different styles because when you expose yourself to different styles it exposes you as a martial artist and i'm like my ultimate goal is to fill in all these goal all these gaps in my game so i can be the most complete fighter and someone like velodia is like the perfect test it's like the perfect test He's like 11 and three. He's got knockout power. You like that, like, uh, like he has like a European style kickboxing and he's not going to quit. You saw him in the last fight. He was down two rounds. I was there at the fight watching it with my coaches. I'm just like, damn, this dude is not getting put away, which means it makes for an exciting fight. But it also is going to test me as a fighter, because if a guy who fought uh, another prime 135er, is not getting put away for two rounds and he had the mental capacity to be like, hey, I don't give I don't give a fuck what just happened. We're gonna go out in the third round and I'm gonna I'm coming out. Like he knew he was down and you saw him go, well, all right, it's all or nothing this last round. That excites me because it means when I'm when or if I'm up, 
he's not going to pull off the gas. He's not going to quit. So it means I can never be lax in the fight. And that's why I say be disciplined. Don't get suckered into the firefight, if that makes sense. Like, hey, this guy is not going away. Let me go in and try and put him away. And then next thing you know, here comes this. Here comes it. Here comes this. And it's like, hey, be disciplined. And if you're disciplined, the outcome that you want will be there. And being patient has been like my biggest gap as far as like, uh, as my pro career and the competition has come up, uh, like I said, I've rushed a couple things in a couple pro fights and they went the distance and I missed a couple tiny little details. But, you know, I'm excited about this because I know this guy is not going to get he's not going to get like shy after a, a punch or after a submission attempt or after a takedown. He's going to do everything in his power that he can to win. At the end of his last fight, he was yelling for the F3 sponsorship. I'm like, bro, I already got it. Like, <laughs> 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 so I know he's hungry. And, and, and these are the kind of fights that, uh, that uh, excite me because it's going to allow me to push myself as a martial artist and a man. And uh, I'm just excited, man. <laughs> like, you can't see. I'm just excited. Um, you talk about the, the talent that's in, in this, this bracket. Like he, he went through Caracapa and like you said, Caracapa is a, a legit like yeah. champion oh. of the promotions. Yeah. He was winning that fight handily over two rounds. He was two, uh, two up. Two. And then you look at the other side of the semifinals. This, it's a great fight. Justin Wetzel versus Brandon oh. Lewis. Oh my Dude, God. What a fight, right? Give me your thoughts on that. And is there anyone you think has got the edge and, or is there anybody you would prefer to see in the finals? All right. So, a lot of because everybody knows I'm in a tournament now. They're asking me like questions about the other fighters, and to be honest, like that's not my focus. My focus is on uh, is on Velodia because I'm like, if I start looking over here, is is me not being disciplined? Exactly what we talked about. Yes, I I told someone I was like, when I'm fighting, it's a very like it's duality. I have to be so laser laser focused that I can see something, but not so focused in on something where I'm unaware of everything else. It's like reading a book this close. You're not going to be able to read it. You got to kind of like back out a little bit. So I am aware that there are other fighters, but regardless of if I was in a tournament or not, there will always be other fighters. There will always be another matchup. So my focus isn't on the other half of the bracket, but I am a fan as well. I love the <laughs> I, lo I love the Winsel versus versus a uh, uh, Brandon Lewis. Fight. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like. This is in my head and like, and I say this with all respect because I'm not the kind of person that like, I'm not a crab in the barrel person. Like I got to disrespect someone else to make myself look good. The same way that I feel like the UFL is doing its own thing and they never have to say like, these other promotions are bad. That makes us good. They're, they're just saying, hey, we're doing things differently. And then other people will do the comparison. But this is like, I think of like, this is some undercard UFC bantamweight <laughs> shit going on right now. And I'm like, this is the level where I keep telling people, hey, I fight for the UFL. I'm like, hey, give them, because I know a little bit about business. I'm like, give them the three to five year mark and they're not going to be a thing that's not unheard of. They will be competing with the top promotions in the United States of America, your Bellator, your PFL, because of the things that you guys are offering I literally, I said, man, they're going to be getting guys from bigger shows when they get cut from these whatever, and they're still great fighters. They can be like, yo, they offer health care. They got stocks. They got tournaments. They got this, man. I'm signing with the UFL. Like, <laughs> I've literally had guys who were, like, on my same level as far as career-wise. Like, yo, how I get in with the UFL? I'm like, hey, yo, you got to get you a manager named Jesse James Wallace. Shout out to my manager, <laughs> Jesse James Wallace. But, uh, yeah, just... About that fight, I just I love I love the fight because you know they always say like styles make fights. Just because you can beat this person and that person can beat you doesn't mean you can beat that person, right? That's the MMA math. The math ain't math, and it don't make sense. Uh, and it's a fight. Anything's possible. Uh, I just like I just as a fan of the sport, I like those guys fighting because I think they have the skill set and the styles to challenge each other like the height difference the grappling the the power striking it just is like if the body the body types not the styles the body types remind me of like a uh, chad mendez versus like a holloway kind of like somebody long in, yeah. in the small in, in the in the lower weight class 100%. versus somebody short compact so i'm thinking of like 
the distance game. How is this person going to get in on the grappling exchanges? Are they going to go over the top, which now exposes them for the short person strike versus how do they get under a guy if they're going to do that who's short and looking for the power shot? So I'm just like, as a nerd, you hear me nerding out right now, like (laughs) I'm excited about that. And then that's like the fan side, but I'm not even looking like, oh, trying to break down them as fighters. I'm looking at the person in front of me uh, as far as competition wise and what and what I have to do and stay disciplined in my fight in order uh, to get to do my job. That's it. The um, all of that, everything amounts to uh, December 16th, which will be the finals. And even though you're not looking across at the opponents, one thing that will be on the line that I'm sure you have thought about is that UFL belt. Yep. And you talk about the promotion, where it can go and what it could become over the next three to five to 10 to 20 years. Yeah. Um, what would it mean to be the first? What would it mean to be the first UFL bantamweight champion? I, I, I wish that there was like a, whatever they call it, a thing that could like measure my heart rate with like a sound. When you just said that, I got excited. Um, I wrote in my book, I have a gratitude journal. Every morning I wake up, I write a, a minimum three things that I'm grateful for. It allows me to just uh, kind of have a different perspective on life. Right. Like I want to be grateful for the things I I, I have. And I also write things that I don't have that I'm grateful for because I know that I will get it with the right recipe, which is hard work and consistency and determination over time. And that is something I wrote in my book like. A year and a half ago, like I was supposed to have this fight, COVID happened, all this crazy crap happened. I didn't have a fight for 18 months. I finally got back on the scene. I got a little traction. Uh, I had some fights with the icon. I had two wins. I got a loss. And I was just like, man, like, I know that first strap is right around the corner. And no disrespect to local promotions. I could have went to a lot of different local tiny promotions and got a, a, a 135 strap just to say I have it. But I told my coach and my best friend, Lathan Lawson, I said, the strap is just a shiny, shiny piece of uh, 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 equipment to show the world who I a- already have been my whole entire life. Right. So I know who I am. And now it's time for the world to see it. And that's what that strap means to me. It's like when I get that and it's wrapped around my waist, all the hard work and these visions that I've had in my head since 2016, I still remember the before my first fight, uh, my first MMA coach. Uh, he fought Muay Thai. He, he trained, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Eric Paulson in Virginia with Brandon the Truth Vera, like all this crazy stuff. And he would tell me stuff, and I was just stupid enough to believe it. I said, you got to just be stupid enough to believe and don't question everything because smart people question too much shit. And I'm like, he would tell me to do something, I'd do it. And I remember before, before my first fight, he was like, hey, man, like go in a, go in a dark room, cut all the lights off, uh, play your walkout music. And I want you to envision yourself walking to a stage like the lights are on. There are thousands of people. I don't care if you if you like to be the underdog, they're booing you. If you want to be you want to like feed off of that, they're cheering for you. Just know like all this. But none of that matters because it's about what you feel in here. And it's not nervousness. It's like nervousness and excitement have the same physiological response on the body. Right. He's like. You're nervous before you get on a roller coaster because of this feeling. And then once you're strapped in, that's it. You know it's nowhere to go. And that's like what the feeling you get when you get in the cage. And once you hit that first drop, once you get that first exchange with your with your with your uh with your adversary, it's exciting. It's like, <laughs> boom, oh, when's the next drop? When's the next this? It's like, so I've played this moment in my head since 2016. It's like first whatever, U- UFL, first. Bantam weight champion. I'm on, and I just hear it, hear it, hear it. And on my pro debut, my coach looks at me. He was in my corner. He was like, they are calling me out to, they're calling me out, getting ready for me to bring me out to the fight or whatever for my walkout. And this is prior to COVID. And I had sold out the venue. And the crowd is going so loud. I never even heard my walkout music. They're like, come on, come on. I'm like, I'm waiting for my, for my walkout music. They're like, it started. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> they go to the curtains back. They open the door. The it's going nuts. Like I got a, a, a video that somebody recorded. You can't hear 
anything. All you hear is people yelling. And before we went out, my coach looks at me because he's a little bit of a smart ass. He's like, you nervous? He's like, this is that moment you always been waiting for? Every kid's dream ever? I'm like, man, shut the fuck up. Like, <laughs> like, but I already envisioned this shit like a, thousands of times in my head. So when I walked out, I was like, it's finally here. And then they said, clink, clink. And then the switch goes. A minute, 42 six seconds later, my, my pro debut, I finished the fight with an arm bar. And honest to God, it was like having an outer body experience. I like step back. And I'm doing like this in the cage because everybody's going nuts. And the way the venue was, it was two levels and on the bottom levels here. And it felt like a gladiator pit because it was really close, very intimate. And there are like 1,200 people in this fucking like local club. It's ridiculous because it's prior to COVID. And they are just screaming. And I, I felt like I could see myself in third person. And I was just like, I took that moment in. And I was like, this is what it feels like to be a champion. And like, I'm, I, I want that again. I want that again, that moment that no one can ever take from you, no matter from here to there, you know that you've worked for it. And I've been working for it since 2016. And as you see, like just clear as day, as I speak it to you, like I can see it in my head and it doesn't mean it's not going to be, uh, it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean it's not going to be obstacles. There are fucking men that see the same thing in their head. And that's the beautiful thing about the sport is now we're going to see who can put that into fruition via hard work, determination, fucking problem solving when fists and shins are coming at your face and somebody's choking you and do it. It's like, that's what it's going to take to get this thing that you feel that you have earned. I don't like to use the word deserve because my team thinks I deserve a win. Just like his team thinks he deserve a win. We call that entitlement. Nothing, nothing's deserved. You earn that shit. So when we're in there, uh, my, my job is to go do my job on the 12th and earn my way to that bantamweight championship earn my way to being the first ufl bantamweight champ i love it goosebumps genuine goosebumps there brother i wish i'd been and seen that arena because it sounds absolutely oh, insane my friend nuts um the other side and we've talked a little bit about this or i've heard you talk about this is mm -hmm. what comes with being with the ufl because you got given shares you have shares in this company this isn't a company you just fight for you now own a piece of this pie and again you're a business guy as well you you can see where this can go over three, five, 10, 15, 20 years. What does it mean to you? Or what did it feel like when Harrison Rogers, you know, told everyone they're going to get shares and then you got them, you actually have a piece of this pie. Oh, it was like reassuring. Like I always tell people like you pay for insurance, like car insurance and phone insurance and health insurance. And then whenever it comes time that you need them to replace a phone, fix your car, go get something checked out. It's like you get this big runaround. It's like, man, I've been giving to you every check. I've been giving to you every month. And the one time I need something, you're giving me the runaround, right? Because it costs you money. And it's like you guys are doing the opposite. It's like he said, hey, I've only seen you fight. You've never worked for me. And what the UFL does is exactly how I think of business. This is not what, you, what I can get from you. This is what can I do for you? Because if you're always saying, what can I do for you? Imagine what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, shit, well, what can I do for you? I told someone there's a difference between uh, uh, taking something and accepting something. I said, if I have something in my hand and I'm like, here you go, and you take it from me, that's cool. But if I have something in my hand, I say, here you go. And then you put out your hand and say, oh, thank you. You're allowing me to give it to you. And you guys are giving the fighters something that no other promotion is doing. You're giving them security and foundation. Like I said, just knowing, hey, Moon, I got three fights this year. I know when they are allowed me to go to Thailand this year. It was one of the biggest and best experience. I told someone, I was like, man, I didn't level up as a martial artist. I leveled up as a man. I've never been international. We grew up poor. I remember it's fucking 10, 11 of us in a two bedroom roach infested fucking apartment. Me and my cousin who's fucking six, two, uh, shared a closet. And I make that as a joke. And when they say share a closet, what do you mean? I said, no, like we slept in the closet, bro. Like, like it was a walk-in closet, but you know, that was our way away from my fucking family full of women that was like world war z out there and that was like our safe space so when i was like i was like but like and i don't say that as like a pity thing it's just like i don't i don't i don't regret that i don't 
forget that. And I know how much my family and everybody invested in me. And that's the kind of, that's the way I live my life. And I invest in other people. So to when I, when I see a, a promotion, not just somebody I work for saying, Hey, let's build a relationship at the, at the bottom. Hey, not let's wait till you get big and then I'll give you this or, Hey, wait till we get big. And I'm like, Ooh, now I want to fight for them. It's like, Hey, we're both here. We're both making noise, uh, uh, on the media scene, but let's make actual noise together, right? We talk about the whole Jake Paul, oh, you know, he's like, I'm going to change fighters' pay and this, that. That's cool. Where's the work at? I can talk. You know how many good sound bites I have? Cool. What work have you fucking done? So when a promoter is like, hey, man, I'm going to give you health insurance, and I'm like three fights in, like, all right. Hey, dog, like, you know, shit, this shoulder kind of like, you know, these goddamn hooks ain't coming off the same. What? Like, oh, yeah, 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 wait till one more. No, this was at the start. It's like, hey, you've never fought for us, but this is what we're offering. And I talked to my manager when he, like I said, shout out to Jesse James Wallace, man, best manager in the biz, man. Um, he offered, when he told me to offer, I was like, yo, this can't, I literally told him, I said, this, I said, I don't believe you. I said, Jesse, I don't believe you until they send me a contract. They sent me a contract. I said, okay, cool. Hey, I would like this one stipulation in the contract, blah, blah, blah. He said, all right, I'm going to talk to them. They sent me back the contract the same day. I was like, damn. All right, well, my decision is made. I'm like, health insurance, Fox, this. I get to grow with someone versus saying, hey, you got here and now I'm here and let's let's do this now that we both have like tested and we kind of dated with each other. And I'm like, shit, I've been dating promotions since 2016. I'm tired of dating. Like, put a ring on it, man. Like, let's go. Like... <laughs> Let's go. I want to build something with you. And I'm like, that's what I see with the UFL. And at the rate that I feel like it's just, it's going to hit like a pocket of rocket fuel eventually. And it's going to just boom, just going to blow up. And I'm like, if it has anything to do with it, y'all just won't be on the West Coast. Look, Harrison Rogers, Rampage, Frank Mir, I'm telling y'all right now. I know y'all doing all y'all shows in Arizona. If you come to Atlanta, if you come to Atlanta, I swear on everything. I, I can sell it out just, just me on the show. <laughs> I also got teammates and know everybody in all the local areas. So if y'all want to put a show together in Atlanta, Georgia, have no fear that the stadium will not get sold out. It will get sold out. Uh, and you'll have a great time because Atlanta is madness. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go. I've never been. I've never been to lots of states in America, lots of cities. Oh, man. But Atlanta, Georgia is one that I have to have to see. Yeah, you, uh, there's anything you name, you like in the city, madness, any any kind of event. And then the, I, I like the outskirts of the city. Like everybody likes to do all the all the like party club. I'm like, look, give me the outskirts. I like to do a little bit more relaxed stuff. I fight people six days a week. I just be trying to chill. <laughs> look. <laughs> But like everything from your like your mountain, your hi mountain stuff, hiking stuff, camping, uh, trails, museum, sightseeing, uh, after party stuff, concerts, events, live music venues, so much local uh, stuff. The food scene is absolutely crazy. That's got me. You got me. That's that's got me. That's now you're Yo, talking my language. Um, um, you name any 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 ethnicity of food, and they have like boroughs in atlanta you just go there like i'm telling you it's so good uh listen the, the, you talk about selling out atlanta you talk about the the hype you bring you talk about the ninja shit that you've done in ufl <laughs> one some people have never experienced the moon show and this is a this is a sad thing because they need to so if, <laughs> if somebody hasn't experienced the moon show if they've never seen you fight what can they expect from a moon cosme and particularly what can they expect august 12th oh man they can expect to see uh uh a 100% fully dedicated professional athlete. You're not going to get any like craziness on the back end. You're going to get somebody that's 100% locked in and focused on what the job is. Yes, we got to be entertaining. You expect a lot of sound bites out of interviews. You can expect some crazy hair. The best hair. The best hair in the game, man. The best hair in the game. Yeah, expect some crazy hair. I look, I always win the first battle. The first battle is the walkout. My walkouts, my walkout music's always on point. <laughs> and then uh, just excitement in the fight. Uh, but also like discipline, like, you know, if you go in, you'll watch, you're going to see some exciting shit. And I like to fight. If sometimes being disciplined is not working for me, that's when I go back to the corner and like, Hey, go do that shit. You know how to do. And I'm like, okay. 
<laughs> hey, boom, it's over. I hey, look, the first fight I ever, the first fight, I got a lot of finishes in my amateur career, and it's because my coaches tell me to be singularly focused. Hey, we're gonna do this one thing. You don't have, you can't do shit else. Cut your brain off. Just listen to us, because th they worked on the film study and stuff like that. And I remember my last amateur fight. I was back in the back, warming up. I was going through my motions, getting in my zone. And my my, my best friend is Lathan Lawson, who's my head coach, and then also my uh, my head coach at the time was Kurt Reinhardt. Uh, was the gentleman I was telling you about, you know, fought Muay Thai and stuff. He come to me. They was like, hey, man, you're looking good. They look at me. Lathan goes, hey, man, what's better than a wild? Like, what's more dangerous than a wild dog? I was like, what? He says, a wild dog that's been trained. Because they always got that that wildness in them. And then he looked at me. He said, it's time to take the, take the chains off. And I just was like, <gasps> and I was just like, ooh. <laughs> hey, and the crazy part is when he said that, for the first minute and a half of that fight, I was the most disciplined, I've, I think. I mean, this last fight, I was probably the most disciplined, like, technique-wise. But this one, if you look at the film, there's a look in my eyes like nothing else existed. And I'm just focused on this one guy. And I'm counterfighting because I know he was going to do something. And I'm a very aggressive person. But it's crazy when I counterfight how much more TKOs or KOs that I get because I'm not forcing it. I'm like, here's my moment. Boom. Or here's my moment. Boom. And everybody remembers this fight. I won knockout of the year in 2019. That was my last amateur fight. That was in the second round. No one remembers the first round. This I throw this cross. The dude shoots, takes me down, gets to my side. I give up my back to get out the back. Like, he had me in trouble. No one remembers that. Because once we got to that part, I was like, oh, once I reversed the position and got him on his back, I was like, it's, it's time to go now, right? <laughs> Referee stood us up, said I hit him in the back of the head, which I didn't, but uh, stood us up. And then that was like the dog off the chain moment because in my head, I was like, I'm down. This dude took me down. He got to side. He got my back. I peeled off the back. And the second that I went to finish the fight on the ground and pound, I hit him once. He turned his face to the cage. And I'm like, that's his fault, not mine. So the second hit probably caught him in, in the back of the head area. And instead of the referee saying, give me a warning, he stood us straight up. So I'm like, man. We're halfway through this first round, and I feel like I'm losing the fight. And, like, Lathan was like, why wait? They was like, the doctor stood us up, make sure he was okay. He's like, hey, it's time to go. <laughs> if you look at that first minute and a half versus that second minute and a half, you're like, bro, you are two different fighters. I was like, fuck it. <laughs> Started doing my shit. I knew he was a wrestler. I hit a feint. He dropped his hand. I came up with a short right, cracked him, and then he, like, started panic striking. I backed out. Boom, hit him with a head kick. We started getting in the mix, and I'm like, okay, yeah, here we go. Now, this is the fight that I want, right? And then he starts backing down. Second round comes out. I already see that from his technique, he's throwing desperation shots, and he wants to shoot from really far. And I'm like, all right, cool. Baited him in, came in with the shot, boom, hit him with the up uppercut, flat line. And, like, that's, like, what I'm excited about is, like, hey, when you're a wild fucking animal, you're never, you're never, you're never going to be tamed. It's always going to be in there. You just have to have the discipline to control it when it works against you. And then when shit isn't going your way, let that motherfucker loose. Let all hell break loose. And it's like, that's what you can expect to see. Very disciplined. Someone who's going there to get a job done. And if like the checklist isn't working, we're going to crumble that bitch up and we're going to start, uh, we're going to start some chaos. <laughs> Better, better to be a warrior in a garden, right? That's exactly. the, yeah, that's the exactly. one. That's it.